Hi everybody, my name is John Millett and I'm from the University of Michigan. And in this SAM session, I'll be covering HCC screening and surveillance ultrasound, and specifically how you can learn to love ultrasound LIRAS if you aren't already madly in love with it. Thanks so much to the SRU for inviting me to speak. I have no financial disclosures. At the end of this session, you'll be able to do several things. You'll be able to describe ultrasound LIRAS observation categories and their incidence in the HCC screening population. You'll be able to state the positive predictive value of category two and category three observations for detecting HCC. You'll be able to list management recommendations for all ultrasound LIRAS observation categories. And last but not least, you will love ultrasound LIRAS. So let's start off with an example case. Say you're reading this HCC screening ultrasound in this patient with cirrhosis, and you detect this subcentimere hyperechoic observation in the left lobe that doesn't have definite vascularity. Now see if you can answer a few questions about this observation. First, how often is an observation like this encountered on HCC screening ultrasound? What is the probability that this observation represents early HCC? And what is the best management recommendation for this finding? If you don't know the answer to all these questions, you definitely have room in your heart for ultrasound LIRADS and will learn something in this session. Ultrasound is the preferred imaging test for HCC screening and surveillance worldwide and most liver societies recommend screening high-risk patients every six to 12 months. However, high quality data on the diagnostic efficacy of ultrasound for HCC screening has historically been lacking, largely because of variability in techniques and reporting. The American College of Radiology launched ultrasound LIRADS in 2017. And like other RAD systems, Ultrasound LIRAD standardizes the performance and interpretation of exams, as well as recommendations for follow-up. This has been a huge step forward for care of patients being screened for HCC, and it has allowed us to start studying HCC screening and surveillance with ultrasound in ways that were not previously possible. Now, for those of you unfamiliar with ultrasound LIRADs, everything you need to know is free to download on the ACR website and the manual is a much quicker read than its bigger CT and MR sibling. But if you're unfamiliar with the system, I'm going to show you the major highlights to bring you up to speed and so that you can start using it right away if you wish. First, it's important to know who you should use ultrasound LIRADS on. Ultrasound LIRADS is not for everybody and should only be used in specific groups at risk for HCC. This includes people with cirrhosis of any etiology, some groups with chronic HBV infections, and others as per local or regional guidelines, such as those with chronic HCV infection or fatty liver disease. Additionally, ultrasound LIRAD should generally not be applied to emergency patients or inpatients, since there are often active issues in these patients that preclude doing a screening exam to ultrasound LIRAD standards. And the beauty of ultrasound LIRAS is that it is simple. One patient with one liver gets one visualization score and one observation category. The visualization score provides an estimate of the sensitivity of the exam, while the observation category determines the appropriate follow-up. Using ultrasound LIRAS really is as easy as ABC and 123. Let me show you what I mean. Let's first talk about visualization scores, which are grouped into A, B, or C. A visualization score of A means there are no or minimal limitations, and sensitivity is unlikely to be affected. A score of B means there are some limitations and small masses may be obscured. And a score of C means that the exam is severely limited as is its sensitivity for detecting HCC. Assigning these scores isn't tough or something you need to perseverate over. Let's take a look at some examples. This is an example of a visualization score of A, 
where the liver is nice and homogeneous, there is minimal beam attenuation or shadowing, and the liver is nearly entirely visualized. A score of B is not as pretty. The liver here is moderately heterogeneous with some beam attenuation, and some portions of the diaphragm may not be clearly visualized on other views. And a score of C is a bad looking exam. Visualization scores of C can have severely heterogeneous parenchyma with severe beam attenuation or shadowing, and the majority of the liver or the diaphragm is not clearly visualized. We've learned a few things about visualization scores as they started to be studied. First is the factors that can be associated with visualization scores of C. And those are cirrhosis, particularly child pew class B or C cirrhosis, clinically significant fibrosis, which often goes along with cirrhosis, with a fibrosis score of at least F2, moderate to severe fatty liver disease, and an increased BMI. Essentially, all factors that anyone who reads a lot of abdominal ultrasounds would expect to decrease the quality of liver visualization. And groups have also taken a look at inter-observer agreement with visualization score assignments. One study found moderate agreement between five subspecialty attending radiologists with a kappa of 0.51. While another looked at agreement between nine radiologists of all experience levels and found good agreement with an intraclass correlation coefficient of 0.70. For comparison, these numbers are actually similar to slightly better than those for breast density assignments with BIRADS. And while there are no current guidelines on what to do with a visualization score of C, such an assessment is nonetheless useful for providing the context and communicating an expected level of sensitivity to our referring providers. The meat of ultrasound LIRADS, however, lies in the observation categories, of which there are also three. These drive follow-up recommendations. Let's look at some examples and the specific follow-up recommendations for each category. Category one is assigned for negative exams or exams with definitely benign observations, such as a simple cyst or fat sparing around the gallbladder. Routine six-month follow-up is recommended for Category 1 observations. Category 2 is for any observation less than one centimeter that is not definitely benign. It can be hyperechoic, like these observations on the left and the right, or hypoechoic, like the observation in the middle but whatever it is should be indeterminate at ultrasound. These findings should be followed up with ultrasound in three to six months, with the exact time interval to be determined at the discretion of the ordering provider. And category three is for observations that are at least one centimeter and not definitely benign. This could be a focal observation or a general area of parenchymal distortion. Like category two observations, they can be any echogenicity, like the examples here, but must be indeterminate at ultrasound. Category three is also for a new venous thrombus in a hepatic or portal vein. It doesn't need to clearly be a tumor thrombus since tumor and bland thrombus can be difficult to tell apart at ultrasound. Whatever the subtype of category three observation, these observations warrant a multiphase contrast enhanced CT MR or contrast enhanced ultrasound for further workup and to establish a definite diagnosis. Here are the outcomes of each of these observations on the subsequent multi-phase contrast enhanced exams. Two of these were HCCs, one was a focal nodular hyperplasia, and the venous thrombus was a bland portal vein thrombus. Now that we've covered the basics of ultrasound LIRADS, I want to cover what we have learned about ultrasound LIRADS as it has begun to be used and studied over the past four years. The first data on the clinical performance of ultrasound LIRADS came out of a large retrospective multicenter study in the United States and published in JACR in 2019. This was a study of 2,050 adults at high risk for HCC who had undergone HCC screening and surveillance ultrasound in 2017. 
Ultrasound reports and medical records of these patients were reviewed and analyzed. The study population had a typical distribution for a HCC screening and surveillance population. 51.4% of the patients had cirrhosis of varying causes. 27.1% had chronic hepatitis B infection without cirrhosis. 11.4% had chronic hepatitis C infection without cirrhosis. And there were smaller groups of patients with fatty liver disease and other chronic liver diseases without cirrhosis. Of the 2050 exams performed at these five large academic medical centers, 76.8% had no or minimal limitations and were assigned visualization score A. 18.9% had moderate limitations and were assigned visualization score B, and 4.2% had severe limitations and were assigned a visualization score of C. For observation categories, 90.4% of exams were negative or observation category 1, 4.6% were observation category 2, and 4.9% were observation category 3. So the key takeaways of the study on the clinical performance of ultrasound LIRADS were that ultrasound LIRADS is being used on the intended target population. The vast majority of exams are diagnostically acceptable with visualization scores of A or B. And the approximate distribution of observation categories is that about 90% of exams are category one, 5% are category two, and 5% are category three. Using similar methods to the multi-center study, our group at the University of Michigan took a closer look at the outcomes of category two and category three observations in our large HCC screening population. We reviewed the outcomes of all category two and three observations detected in patients who had undergone HCC screening and surveillance ultrasound over two and a half years. Over 3,000 patients at high risk for HCC were screened with ultrasound during the study time period. 6.1% of these patients had an ultrasound 2 observation, while 8.4% of patients had an ultrasound 3 observation. These percentages are slightly higher than the percentages in the prior multi center study. For category 2 observations, a subcentimeter mass was the most common reason an observation was classified as category two. A subcentimeter area of parenchymal distortion made up 16.5% of category two observations. 54.6% of patients with a category two observation underwent multiphase contrast enhanced MR or CT sometime during the follow up period. 29.4% of patients were followed only by ultrasound, and small proportions of patients were either explanted or lost to follow-up. And interestingly, in patients followed with multiple types of imaging, MR or CT was the first follow-up modality in 53.4% of patients, despite ultrasound LIRAD's recommendations for initial short-term follow-up ultrasound. In the 110 patients with a category two observation and confirmatory testing, which included multiphase CT, MR, or histopathology, 74.5% had no abnormality corresponding to the category two observation. In 20% of patients, the category two observation was benign, such as a hemangioma or regenerative nodule. 2.7% of category two observations turned out to be early HCC, while 1.8% corresponded to LR3 observations at CT or MR, and a single observation was a cholangiocarcinoma. Taking into account all patients with confirmatory testing or those with negative ultrasound follow-up for a minimum of a year, the positive predictive value of a category two observation for HCC was 2.4%.
when we looked at category 3 observations, 88.8% were due to a measurable mass greater than 1 centimeter. 7.9% were due to an area of parenchymal distortion greater than 1 centimeter. And only 3.4% were due to a new venous thrombus. In the 218 patients with confirmatory testing, 41.3% had no corresponding abnormality on multiphase CT, MR, or histopathology. 32.6% had a benign finding, such as a hemangioma, regenerative nodule, or cyst. 5.5% of Category 3 observations were a LR3 observation at CT or MR. 5.5% represented a probable HCC. 13.3% represented a definite HCC, and 1.8% were found to be another malignancy, such as a cholangiocarcinoma. Overall, the positive predictive value of an ultrasound 3 observation for probable or definite HCC was 18.8%, and for any malignancy, it was 20.6%. So the key takeaways of these studies looking at the outcomes of Category 2 and Category 3 observations are as follows. First, the vast majority of Category 2 observations are benign, with a very low positive predictive value for HCC of approximately 2%. And approximately 20% of ultrasound 3 observations represent HCC or another malignancy. Therefore, both the 3 to 6 month ultrasound follow up recommendation for category 2 observations and the recommendation for multiphase contrast enhanced imaging for category 3 observations are appropriate. And despite this, most category 2 observations are followed first by MR or CT rather than the recommended short term ultrasound follow up, at least at our institution. Whether this is the case elsewhere, and why this is happening is certainly worth studying in the future. Lastly, beyond the outcomes of observation categories, ultrasound LIRADS has enabled us to better study the sensitivity of ultrasound for detecting HCC. Prior meta-analyses have found the sensitivity of ultrasound to range from 78 to 94 percent for any stage of HCC and from 47 to 63 percent for early HCC. Detecting early HCC while it's still easily treated is the goal of HCC screening and surveillance. Using ultrasound LIRADS applied to patients who all had both ultrasound and contrast enhanced multiphase imaging, a group in Korea found that the sensitivity of ultrasound for detecting HCC was lower than previously reported at 39%. It'll be interesting to see if the low sensitivity reported is also found in future studies. So now that we've covered the clinical performance of ultrasound LIRADS and the outcomes of various observations, let's revisit our test case and see if you're better equipped to answer the questions that I originally posed. How often is a subcentimeter observation like this encountered on a screen exam? Well, we now know that Category 2 observations represent approximately 5% of screening exams. What is the probability that this observation represents HCC? Remember that Category 2 observations have a very low probability of representing HCC, with a positive predictive value of approximately 2%. And what is the best management recommendation for this observation? As per ultrasound LIRADS guidelines, a three to six month ultrasound follow up is appropriate. Four months later, this patient had the repeat ultrasound, and that observation grew to 1.1 centimeters, so is now considered category three. Let's think about those same questions as they pertain to this case four months later. First, how often is a category three observation encountered? Well, just like category two observations, these are found in approximately 5% of HCC screening exams. What is the probability that this Category 3 observation represents HCC? As we discuss, the positive predictive value of a Category 3 observation for HCC is approximately 
And finally, what is the best management recommendation for a Category 3 observation? Multi-phase contrast enhanced CT, MR, or ultrasound is the way to go per ultrasound LIRAN's recommendations. And sure enough, that growing observation was a definite HCC on a follow-up multi-phase contrast enhanced CT and was able to be treated in its early stage. In conclusion, I hope you now have a better sense of what a gift ultrasound LIRADS has been for standardizing HCC screening and surveillance ultrasound, and a better understanding of how research on ultrasound LIRADS over the past four years has both confirmed the appropriateness of management recommendations and provided more specific information on outcomes on various observations. Ultrasound LIRADS is truly lovable, and I hope you've fallen in love with it too now that you've seen some of the gifts it has brought to the world of HCC screening and surveillance ultrasound. A big shout out to the Ultrasound LIRADS Working Group for the continued work on this awesome system. My full references are here if anyone watching wants to review them in more detail. And thank you all so much for your attention and the opportunity to speak to you today. Feel free to reach out to me with any questions at the end of the session or through my contact information here. Thanks again.